Coming up on Green Bay Nation, the Packers run all over the Colts and earn a win with Malik Willis at QB. But will he have a redemption game next in Tennessee? All that and more on Green Bay Nation. Hello and welcome back to Green Bay Nation. I'm Lauren Humbrecht. Joining me to chat everything Packers, he's a Packers beat writer for the Green Bay Press Gazette, Ryan Wood, and he's a radio host for 107.5 and 1400 The Fan, Marcus Eversall. So, gentlemen, no Jordan Love, no problem. The Packers beat the Colts 16-10 with Malik Willis. And then we think, okay, maybe Malik can be the backup, fill in for a couple games. And Jordan Love returns to practice today. How are you feeling about the quarterbacks back and forth? I mean, it's interesting, obviously, a lot still to be seen as far as who's going to start Sunday, but bare minimum, seeing Jordan Love back at practice, that's a huge step in the right direction to him ultimately returning. You just think back to when the injury happened and your mind going to worst-case scenario. It's clearly not that, so good sign to see Love back at practice. I just think I was lied to all offseason. Here we thought that this season, after last year, all we talked about was the quarterback. How's the quarterback going to do? How's he going to do week to week? It, the last thing we're going to talk about is the quarterback, and all we've talked about in 2024 <laughs> is the quarterback so far. So it's like a new year and nothing's changed, except I've, a lot's changed. I've been lied to. Lied Bam to. Bamboozled. Well, I'm not going to bamboozle you on this one. The Packers are now 1-1. One one. They beat the Colts. We'll talk about Jordan Love returning because let's not overlook what Malik Willis did. So they come in. I mean, the, the game was a little closer than the score said because there was that Hail Mary, and then it also wasn't as close as it was because the Packers were completely running over the Colts. What about Matt LaFleur's play calling in this win, Marcus? Do you feel like set the team up for a victory with a backup QB who'd only been around less than three weeks? Well, in its simplest terms, obviously, they leaned heavily on the running game. I mean, 53 runs is a lot of runs. LaFleur said that they wanted their goal was to have at least 40 runs in the game. They were darn near there at halftime. So 53 runs for 261 yards. I mean, that's historically successful stuff. The The run-pass ratio was historic. Like, teams don't run that much, but the Packers were able to do it. And we, we talked about it last week. We knew the Packers were going to have to run the ball. The Colts knew that the Packers were going to run the ball. Problem is, for anybody that says, well, what were the Colts doing? Did they not know that? No, the Colts did know they were going to run the ball. It's just not as simple as to say, hey, we're going to play our run defense stopper defense this week. There's other ways to counteract that and scheme things up, even when the defense knows you're going to run it. And a lot of it is over fans' heads, but it's a huge credit to Matt LaFleur, Adam Stenovich, and the entire staff. I got to tell you, Marcus, I've never, in all my years watching football, I've never seen so much vomit in one game. I mean, it was week two, 2024, is the Puke Bowl, and they just kept going. Any offensive lineman, their dream is to run the ball and keep running the ball, get in that rhythm, get your toes in the ground, be able to go downhill and just hit somebody. But it very quickly went from being a dream to a nightmare because it's the second hottest day in the history of Lambeau Field. It was hot. It was hotter in Lambeau Field on Sunday than it was a week earlier in Brazil, significantly. I thought what they were able to do and stay committed to that run game, not, not ever waver from it. They thought they had, what, needed to get 40 runs going into the game. It ended up being a whole lot more. It was almost 40 runs by, by halftime. That was very impressive. One thing I also liked is how they didn't challenge Malik Willis to the sense that, hey, you have to throw 25, 30 attempts. Just under 15, he kind of kept it right in front of him and wasn't putting too much on his plate again because he's only been in Green Bay for less than three weeks. So another reason why the Packers win this game, three takeaways, second straight week, three, all three were picks. Xavier McKinney gets one early in the game, obviously. Evan Williams finishes the game with a pick. So we talk a lot about complementary football, but Ryan, why do you think the team was so cohesive in this game specifically? Because they had to be. You know, Everyone knew what the stakes were and, and what was expected of them. When you don't have your starting quarterback, when you don't have your star behind center, it, everyone's 111th amplifies. You have to do that much more. So you're talking about a win here where two stars of the game were the backup quarterback and the punter. Hmm. That's, all, that's the definition of complimentary football. When um, Daniel Whelan cast an MVP vote for him. He had three punts. He downed all three inside the 16, one of them a 59-yarder. The last one, game on the line potentially, downs it at the five. When you go... Backup quarterback to punter, all doing their part in the game, every, everyone in between, that's a good day at the office for complimentary football. 
And when you think about complimentary football, it's just look at the three phases. And Ryan, you already highlighted the, the punter. Daniel Whelan had a heck of a game. So special teams contributed. Obviously, Braden Narvison with three field goals. You'd like him not to have the deja vu miss like he had in week one also. But special teams contributed. The offense had the ball for more than 40 minutes. They ran the heck out of the ball, 261 yards. Defense wasn't on the field much and still came up with three takeaways. So offense, defense, special teams, it took a total team effort and everybody delivered. I asked Jair after the game, what's it like to be sitting around for 40 plus minutes? He <laughs> said, it was awesome. I was sitting back <laughs> drinking my Gatorade. Even the players loved it. I mean, everyone needed Gatorade in that heat, though, so realistically. He said it's going to be a quick Monday, right? That, that's what's going through his mind is, hey, this is going to be the quickest Monday film review we've ever had. And it yeah. really was. But yeah. now the Midwest boys are heading to Broadway for week three. Packers prep for their first true road game of the season, heading to Nashville. And the question hangs over the team. Will this be the Malik Willis redemption game, or is Jordan Love ready to retake his role? That's all next on Great Bay Nation. Welcome back to Green Bay Nation. Lauren Helbrecht alongside Marcus Eversall and Ryan Wood. Breaking news today, Jordan Love was back on the practice field for the first time since he sprained his MCL on the final drive against the Eagles. Personally, I was not expecting to see him back this soon, but last week Matt LaFleur was kind of saying, oh, he's day-to-day. -day. You don't know if that's just talk or if that's real, but he was back out there. So we don't know who the starter will be because they're taking it day by day. But, Marcus, it's just one practice. Do you think that Jordan is on the path to return this weekend? I think he's on the path. Now, will that path ultimately lead to him being under center on Sunday? I think it's too early to say that. But clearly, he's moving in the right direction. I mean, you get back on the practice field to start the quote-unquote work week on Wednesday, first practice of the week, and, and he's out there. It's not like he was just limited for the first time on Friday going into the weekend or for a walkthrough. He was practicing on Wednesday. Now we'll see what happens moving forward through the rest of the week. Obviously, it's it's one step at a time. They are taking it day by day. How many cliches can I use here? How many <laughs> cliches will, will they use before the week is over? But certainly moving in the right direction. I'm not a doctor, but I feel more confident that he's closer to returning now than I did, say, 12 hours ago. I'm a little upset that you just revealed you're not a doctor. That's why we have you on the show. I or actually am. I tell you, I've been lied I'm to. I'm just saying it. I'm just humble. <laughs> been lied to. Humble. We'll, we'll change your lower third. I, I liked what Jordan said, too, after when he was talking to the media today. He said he was hopeful. Yeah. So, obviously, when you ask a player, do you want to return, they always, almost always say yes, but he said he's taking it day by day, but I'm hopeful. But, Ryan, we probably won't know who the starting quarterback is until – the injury report comes out the day of the game because that's what happened this week. This week, So with Malik Willis returning to Tennessee, he's going to the team that drafted him, put faith in him, and then traded him away less than a month ago. Is this a re revenge game? Is this a redemption game? What do you think? For a seventh-round pick. They traded him away for a Samari Torre. Uh, so, they're, they're, look, last week I was adamant about this. Jordan Love was not going to play. No matter what Matt LaFleur said, I was adamant. There's no way they're putting him on the field and they're going to have him play. Now, it turns out, from everything I heard in the locker room afterward, it was a lot closer than I thought during the time. It was actually a consideration until late in the week, but they, 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 they didn't put him out there. What I'm adamant about this week, no matter what Malik Willis says, yeah, there's something personal there because you got traded away for a seventh-round pick, and now you might have a chance to play him again. You're going to want to show your, your, your ex-partner here, your ex-team, what they're missing, and it's an opportunity to do that. We'll see if he does. I think that this is a close to a 50-50 that Jordan Love plays this week as you'll ever get. Day-to-day -day is a cliche, but it's something that this week applies. They're going to monitor him every single day. And if it's close, come Saturday, Sunday, they're not going to, it's going to be Malik Willis. They're not going to put Jordan Love out there and risk him. Uh, I think it'll be very fascinating to monitor, but it'll be very fascinating to see if Malik Willis goes against his former team as well. When he was talking to us today at his locker, he didn't seem like he was carrying this weight of, Oh, I'm spiteful or upset, but Marcus, I see your face. Well, it's kind of like almost every relationship when there's a breakup. Everyone says, oh, I just I hope for nothing but the best, you know, great person. I'm not trying to prove anything, but then, you know, if you have a certain significant other, you might want to see, look how good I'm doing. Look how <laughs> things have turned out for me. I'm just saying. So I think, I think I'm with Ryan. There's a little something extra there. I have no idea what you mean, Marcus. I've never been in that position before. None of us have ever been in that position before. We don't know what that's like. So. Neither have I. Yeah, no, no personal experience. All right, well, 
Let's uh, keep it not personal and talk about the defense and the personnel. Hey, you like how I did that? There you there? go. All right, when we come back on Green Bay Nation, the Packers defense has been feasting over their first two games. Now Jeff Halfley's unit is taking on a Tennessee Titans team that struggled to keep the ball. We'll head to the locker room to hear from Green Bay's defense next. Welcome back to Green Bay Nation. The Packers already have five interceptions this season after seven all of last season. Meanwhile, Tennessee's second year QB Will Levis has struggled with ball control. Five turnovers in six quarters so far. Can the Packers keep this takeaway pace against a team that knows they need to keep the ball? Well, it's time to get in the zone. Can't be there. Well, two weeks down for this Packers defense, and they've looked pretty good, especially in the last game, three interceptions in that win over the Colts. But they had to prepare for a guy in Anthony Richardson that could possibly take off, utilize his legs. Now going into this weekend, a bit different. Will Levis known more for throwing the rock, and this season it's been quite the struggle. And two losses, three interceptions, something that this Green Bay defense is hoping to capitalize off of. As a defense, we want that to be a part of the story every Sunday or every time whenever we play. But um, for us, it's just to go out there, execute and uh, just do our jobs, read our keys. And, you know, hopefully, obviously, we want to always get the ball. So the more that we get, uh, we're, we're building that confidence more and more every time we step out there on the field. I think it's a focal point of what we do as a defense. Uh, it's important for us to get the ball back for our offense, regardless of how we do it uh, in the air, on the ground. Us as a defense, you know, we always licking our chops at, at any quarterback, any any team. So um, that's our emphasis as a team is to uh, take, get takeaways. I'm just trying to capitalize on anything that's thrown to us or that's given to us. And uh, pretty much just like you said, we want to have the same mentality as last week and uh, the week before that as well. Anytime we can capitalize on turnover, it'll help our offense, help our team. So. That's what we want to do. Well, it's clear we've seen two different versions of Jeff Halfley's defense in that week one loss against the Eagles. Jalen Hurts, he ran rampant, but in week two, this team stymied Anthony Richardson and the secondary looked great, causing turnovers left and right. So knowing that Will Levis is more of a pass heavy quarterback, how do you guys think the Packers defense will fare this weekend? Thanks, Cam. Time now for Q&A with Green Bay. So. Do you think that the pendulum swings all the way to the other side? Levis knows he's struggled with turnovers. The Packers defense has been successful with turnovers, so they're going to play more conservatively, or is he just going to play how he plays? I mean, on paper, it's hard to find evidence as to why the pendulum should swing. I, I feel like Will Levis is just wired to thinking he's almost like a Brett Favre gunslinging type quarterback, and I'm not sure this is a great matchup for him, meaning it's a really good matchup for the Packers. They lead the league with six takeaways. Levis has already thrown three picks and lost two fumbles. He's already had two of the worst turnovers you will see all season. The pick six he threw against the Bears was horrible, and the fumble against the Jets, if that's what we're calling it, was even worse when he just flipped it behind him and the Jets recovered. It is beyond bad. And the Titans offensive line is the worst in the NFL when it comes to pass protection. I think this is the week we finally see this Packers pass rush dominate like we did all summer. I think they need to make Will Levis play quarterback. And I'm aware that Will Levis doesn't run, so that's the only option he has, but still, make Will Levis play quarterback this week because you're going to get a lot of opportunities. I think this this Packers defensive front is really talented, it's really deep, and it hasn't really been unbridled yet. It hasn't had a chance to go with Jalen Hurts and Anthony Richards start the season. Really good matchup for them. And then on the back end, if we've learned anything about this Packers defense through two weeks, is that this secondary is actually opportunistic now. They've got studs back there that will take away the football, make the easy plays, Make the not so easy plays, but be opportunistic in a way that they just weren't last year. Pass rush and opportunistic secondary, great matchup for this Packers defense. And we can't forget that the team has continued to credit the pass rush for the interceptions. They say it all starts up front, and if not for this attacking front, Xavier McKinney, Jair Alexander wouldn't be coming away with these interceptions. Maybe now a, a strip sack or a, a fumble in the back so that Rashawn Gary can come away with I was with just the ball. about to say, this will be the Rashawn Gary game. Right at an Three end. sacks? What do we think? <laughs> all right, Detroit well, last year? All over again? It looks like again. they're going to do their own Challenge or No Challenge. I was planning on doing it <laughs> when we come back on the show. Challenge or No Challenge presented by Bayside Machine Corps. Will Marcus and Ryan agree with my statements, or do they have better ones themselves? That's coming up next on Green Bay Nation. Time now for Challenge or No Challenge presented by Bayside Machine Corporation here on Green Bay Nation. Rules are simple. I make a statement. If you agree, nothing happens. If you don't, flags to the floor like Matt LaFleur. You ready to go? All right, so I know that Jordan Love practiced today, but I don't think that he's going to be ready to go 
with full certainty that there's no chance he gets injured again. I think he needs a little bit more time. So challenge or no challenge, Malik Willis has another touchdown pass. I will challenge that, and I'm just playing the odds here because I think there's a chance that Love does or doesn't play. It's a toss-up probably. And, and even if Malik Willis is the starting quarterback, then there's a chance that he doesn't throw a touchdown. He didn't throw a touchdown in his first three starts with the Titans, so I'm going to say Malik Willis does not throw a touchdown. I am playing the odds, too. I do think there's about a 50% chance that Jordan Love plays. I think it's a very realistic chance that he could play this week, but it's too, I don't think the Packers know yet. I think that a lot of this week has to still develop. How does his knee feel? 50% chance, if it is Malik Willis and the other 50%, Matt LaFleur, LaFleur thought they had to run the ball 40 times last week. He's probably going to think 40 times again. So I want to, I want to, yeah, I want to challenge that. I, I think that they're going to run a ton if it's Malik Willis. That was the most dramatic buildup for a challenge with having. I don't know is what I'm telling you. I really don't know on this one. All right. Well, how about this one? We talked about Will Levis' propensity for turnovers in the Packers' defense. That's forced a lot. So challenge or no challenge, the Packers force two turnovers in this game. No challenge. The Packers lead the league in takeaways right now, and Will Levis leads the league in giveaways. Yes. <laughs> All right, easy as That's that. That's it. Uh, no, no lead in, just yes. I apologize for the non-dramatic challenge or no challenge. Let's do a more exciting one for the last one. The Packers have won a game only by six points. They weren't able to blow out a team that they were obviously better by. Meanwhile, the Tennessee Titans have lost by seven points in their last two games. Challenge or no challenge, the Packers win by double digits. I'll challenge that. I actually think the Titans have a real chance to win this game straight up. I think it's going to be close. The Titans have actually lost both their games by the exact same score, for what it's worth, 24-17 each of the first two games. I think it's going to be close, but I'm going to say it's not a double-digit win. You know, the Packers were one yard away from it being 23-10. to Josh Jacobs gets that doesn't fumble before the goal line. That's a double-digit win. Yeah. That game was at home. This game is on the road. It's going to be in boiling Nashville this weekend. So I think just, it's, going to be, it's going to be even closer being, being at the Packers on the road this week. Well, I hope we teased the predictions coming up because when we close out the show next, it's green and bold. Who do we think is winning this week three matchup? That is when we return. <laughs> Time now to close out the show and get green and bold. Marcus Ryan, who do you have winning week three? Packers versus Titans. I'm going to take the Packers, and I feel like most NFL games come down to turnovers. This is a game the Packers should win the turnover battle significantly, so I'm going to take the Packers to win. And, Lauren, I hope you do your prediction in French. Or the English accent that we heard over the last segment, because that was, that was great. I, I thought last week was a good team beating a bad team, just figuring out a way at home to beat a bad team. I, I think this matchup, Packers defensive front, opportunistic defense against Will Levis, is a good defensive matchup against a bad offensive matchup. I will take the Packers. They both love to drop lore and lore. Uh, we'll save that for later. I personally think the Packers are going to win this game because we saw how well Josh Jacobs was able to do, and I think they're going to continue to build upon him, even if Malik Willis is quarterback again. I think the Packers are going to be 2-1 and one after this game. Thanks again for tuning in to Green Bay Nation. For Mark Severson and Ryan Wood, I am Lauren Helbright. The Packers take on the Titans this weekend.